Okay, welcome back, kiddos. Now we are going to be talking about simplifying radicals. All right, so uh, this is actually just an introduction to simplifying radicals. So make sure that we have our calculator pulled up uh, first off, and this is going to be the scientific version of Desmos. This is going to be uh, more useful for this new you know that we're going into we're especially going to use this square of buttons right over here uh, going forward and this button over here that switches between degrees and radians but today we're going to be concentrating on this square root button over here all right and so that square root button as you would commonly call it uh, is actually a radical symbol so we're going to talk about an introduction to simplifying those radicals all right so first off let's start with um, some definitions this is called the radical symbol okay so we'll be referring to it as that then there's a number that's inside of that radical okay so that number is called the radicand okay so that will we'll be referring to we're going to be talking about this radical symbol the radicand and the whole thing okay the whole thing is called a radical Okay, so we're going to be simplifying those, which makes um, put into a simplified state. All right, so here's my five easy steps. So the first thing we're going to do is list the first 15 perfect squares. So perfect squares are numbers that we get by um, squaring an integer. Okay, so for instance, one squared, we know one squared is one times one, so that would be one. All right, and let's just go down in order up to 15. So two squared, two times two is four. 3 squared, 3 times 3 is 9, 4 squared is 16, 5 squared is 25, 6 squared is 36, 7 squared, 7 times 7 is 49, 8 squared, 8 times 8 is 64, 9 squared, 9 times 9 is 81, 10 squared, 10 times 10 is 100, 11 squared, 11 times 11 is 121, 12 squared, 12 times 12 is 144, 13 squared, 13 times 13 is 169. Okay. 14 squared, 14 times 14 is 196. Okay, 15 squared, 15 times 15 is 225. Okay, so I know you may not know these already by heart, but the pro uh, main reason for that is you probably haven't been asked to memorize these. Okay, so many teachers will ask you to just memorize these first 10, but I'm going to push you to memorize the first 15, and you can definitely do that. Um, any student that is considered uh, themselves to be good at math, I would say going forward, should know their first 15 perfect squares. So these are the ones right over here that we're going to concentrate on. Okay, so uh, as I would be doing this going forward, that would be the first thing I would do is I would list my first 15 perfect squares right over here. I wouldn't necessarily have to do this uh, as long as I had that in mind as going there. All right, so then conversely, thinking backwards though, let's go ahead and fill this in. Okay, so these are the same values that we got over here, but let's work backwards. The square root of one, uh, the number that it times itself equals one would be one. All right, the square root of four, what times itself equals four? That would be two. The square root of 9, right, is 3. 16 would be 4. 25 would be 5. Uh, 36 would be 6. 49 would be 7. The square root of 64 is 8. Square root of 81 is 9. Square root of 100 is 10. Square root of 11, 121 is 11. Square root of 144 is 12. Square root of 169 is 13. Square root of 196 is 14. And the square root of 225 is 15. Okay, so uh, that's important to keep in mind as we are simplifying these because sometimes uh, the number that we need to simplify is already on this chart. So we can say, for instance, okay, uh, if it's 49, the square root of 49, I don't have to go through these steps. I can automatically go to 7. That's the simplest version of the square root of 49. All right, but otherwise, let's go through these five steps. So the first thing we did is we list those 15 perfect squares. Second thing, we're going to find the largest perfect square that will divide evenly into the radicand. So let's go ahead and get started on a problem right over here. Okay, so it says go ahead, go step by step to reduce this radical. So I've started with these um, blank radical symbols to help us at first, and then as we go along on these last two, we're going to drop those, and we're just going to fill those in as we would normally do on our own. Okay, so uh, let's see. It says uh, find simplify the square root of 240. Okay, so we've listed our first 15 perfect squares. Now, we're going to find the largest perfect square, so the largest one of these, that will divide evenly 
into the radicand. So largest perfect square that will divide evenly into there. So we could start right over here and put 240. Okay, we could put 240 divided by 225, but I'm going to show you a little tip uh, to find out where to get started. So divide the radicand by 2. So I'm going to take not the square root of 40, but 240. So I'm just going to type over here 240. Okay, divided by, and I'm going to divide it by 2. That will give me half of that number. Okay, half of that number is 120. So I don't need to start at any of these numbers that are 100 above 120. So I can start right over here. I can start with 100. Okay, so let's go ahead and go to the next line. I'm going to say 100 divided by, okay, um, I'm going to say, uh, I'm sorry, not 100. We're going to say uh, our radicand of 240 okay, divided by 100. Okay, and we're looking for uh, something that divides evenly. Okay, divide evenly means you get a whole number. That's 2.4. Okay, so that's not good. All right, so we would say uh, step number three. We would say 240 divided by 2, which would be equal to 120. Okay, so then we would say 120, uh, 240 divided by 100. Okay, and that wouldn't work, right? And so then we'd go 240 divided by our next number, which would be 81. Okay, and that wouldn't give us a whole number. Then we try 240 divided by 64. Okay, and that wouldn't give us a whole number. Let's go and try this out. So we would say 240 divided by 81, right? That doesn't give us a whole number, right? So then we would say 240 divided by 64. Okay, that uh, does not give us a whole number either. All right, so let's keep going. So we would say 240 divided by 49. Okay, that doesn't give us one either. So let's keep going. 240 divided by 36. Okay, that doesn't work. All right, 240 divided by 25. Still no good. All right, 240 divided by 16. Okay, now that gives us a whole number. All right, so 240 divided by 16 equals 15. Or if we think backwards, 15 times 16 equals 240. Okay, so those are the two factors uh, that will give us 240 using the largest perfect square. So we're going to use that for step number three to set up our radicals. Okay, so step number three right over here, I'm going to put those two numbers in. So I'm going to say 16 and 15. So right over here, I'm going to put 16, and right over there, I'm going to put 15. Okay, and now we're almost done. Okay, so step number four says pop out the integer and bring it down. Okay, so the integer is the value that we get that's a whole number, right? So we said the square root of 16 is 4. So we're going to bring that down. Okay, and then step number 5 says bring down the second radical behind the integer. Okay, so now I'm just going to bring that down. I'm going to say 4 square roots of 15 is my answer. That's how it's pronounced. 4 square root of 15. Okay, that's our step by step. Okay, we're just going to find the largest perfect square that divides evenly into it. We're going to put that in there, uh, the resulting value there. We're going to find that uh, integer that's the result of that, and we're just going to bring that down. All right, so let's do the same thing on this next one. Okay, so the square root of 96. So let's go and find the largest perfect square that will divide evenly into 96. Okay, so we're going to say 96 divided by 2, and that gives us 48, right? So let's go ahead and do that. So we'd say 96 divided by 2, right? That would give us 48 as our value. So now let's keep going. So we're going to say 96 divided by, okay? So uh, we, as we look at our list, we see 49, right? So we don't need to start with any number that is above here. So we can start with 36. So divided by 36, that does not give us a whole number. So 96 divided by 25, right? That does not work. So 96 divided by 16. Okay, so that gives us 16 and 6. So we know those are the two numbers that we're going to put into there, right? So we're going to say our step number 3 is 16 and 6, right? So step number 4 says we're going to bring that down to our answer. So the square root of 16 is 4, and then square roots of 6. Okay, uh, so uh, our answer is 4 square roots of 6. Okay, 
Simple as that. So keeping that in mind, let's go into this one right over here. Pause the video and see if you can get these next two on your own. All right, so we would have said, uh, first off, we would have looked over here and seen if 63 was on here. Okay, so 63 was not on the list, so we're uh, going to move forward. So we would say 63 divided by 2, right? 63 divided by 2, that would give us 31.5, right? So we would look on the list, and we would start at the numbers that were less than 31.5, right? So we start with 25, right? So we'd say 63 divided by 25. Right? And that would not result in a whole number. Right? And so then we would try 63 divided by 16, right? That wouldn't work, right? So then we'd say 63 divided by 9, right? And that would work. 63 divided by 9 would give us 7. Okay, so we'd say that would give us 63 divided by 7 and give us square root of 9 and square root of 7. And then our next step, we bring that down. The square root of 9 is 3, and then we would just bring that down just like we see it. Okay, now this last one uh, is uh, sometimes it comes up. Sometimes all we have to do is think, what is the square root of 81? And if we remember from our list, the square root of 81 is 9. So we automatically know that our answer on this one is 9. Okay, so that's my five simple steps to simplifying radicals. We're going to list those five 15 perfect squares. We're going to divide it by uh, our radicand value by 2 to find out where we start. Uh, then we are going to set up our two radical symbols, bring the first one down, uh, simplified and then just drop down that second radical as it goes from there.